Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our vocabulary. Today is our lesson number 74, day number 74. Let's get going. Let's see what we have, first word. The very first word we want to learn today is N-A-U-G-S-T. It is also sometimes spelled as N-O-U-G-S-T, but it's pronounced the same way. It's pronounced not. It's a noun. Not. What does it mean? Not. Not means not means zero. It means nothing. It means uh, it means I know I have a couple of them written here, but I'm not going to put them on the blackboard. They are too silly. They are more of a Did we learn the word colloquial? What does colloquial mean? Did we learn this word? Yes, we did. Colloquial, we learned it a long time ago. It means informal speech, informal language. To say something in a colloquial manner, to say something colloquially, means to say something in an informal manner. We learned it on day number five. Day five, which means to say something in an informal manner. So if you're speaking colloquially, you'll say, not means nada. Zilch. Zilch. Sifer. Oh, there is a good word. Sifer. Now this word is actually a very tricky word. We're going to cover this word separately in a, in a, in a few seconds. But that's what it means. Not. How do we use it? How do we use it in a sentence? You will say that, well, for example, you might say, uh, for example, I might tell you that uh, just all day yesterday, all day yesterday I spent uh, cleaning up uh, the guest room. I, I cleaned the furniture, I changed the bed sheet, I, I, I bought a new television set for the guest room because my uncle was coming, my uncle was coming to visit us for a couple of weeks and just this morning he called me and he told me that something came up uh, in his job and now he is not coming, now he cannot come. So all of that work I did yesterday was all for not. It was all, it was all for not. It was all for nothing. It was all for naught. I prefer to use I prefer to use this spelling. I have very rarely seen this spelling here, but uh, some people say that that spelling is also correct, so I have to put it on the blackboard. But uh, most of the time, the spelling that I see is N A U G S T, and it's pronounced naught. Do you understand? It was all for naught. It was all for nothing. Nothing came out of it because he now he told me at the end that he's not coming after all. So all of that work I did was for naught. Let's talk about this word. The word is this word right here. And the reason I'm saying this word right here is because this word has two, this word has two very different meaning. It has two very different meaning depending on how you pronounce it. Again, some people some people spell this thing as C Y P H E R, but I prefer this spelling C I P H I. If you pronounce this word as cipher, cipher is exactly how it's pronounced in Arabic. It is an Arabic word. It is and Arabic word meaning zero, meaning zero. The numbering system, the number system that the Western Western world uses today, one, two, three, four, so forth, these are called Arabic numbers. These are called Arabic numbers. Before the Arabs came up with this numbering system, the numbering system that uh, Western Europe used to use in those time, back in the back in the old days, in the Roman time, is this one. Obviously, you know it. Very cumbersome, very tedious. Imagine, imagine trying to multiply three thousand four hundred thirty-seven in Roman numerals by twenty-seven. Again, in Roman numerals, it'll be it'll be a hell. Until the Arabs came along and they invented this numbering system, and Arabs were also the first one to have the notion of zero and they called it 
Not that, I, I should say they called it, they still call it uh, in Arabic, uh, even today, the word sefer means zero. That's what it means literally. Metaphorically, it just means something that is worthless. Something, something of no value. Do you understand? No value. If you do not act, get your act together, if you do not study on your, if you do not concentrate on your study, if you do not get good grade, you will amount to a sefer. Do you understand? You will amount to nothing. Do you understand? You will not get anywhere. Sefer. Now, on the other hand, on the other hand, if you pronounce this word, on the other hand, if we pronounce this word differently, if you pronounce it not as I cannot write today. A cipher, which is why it's very important to learn the phonetics. We have to learn to uh, how, learn how to write the words phonetically. Cipher or cipher. Oh, sorry, that's not the part. Cipher and cipher. Cipher, cipher. Depending on how you pronounce it, the meaning changes. What does it mean to cipher? This is a noun. This is a noun. This, on the other hand, is a verb. What does it mean to cipher? Cipher means to write, to write something in codes, to write something in a coded language so that nobody can read it. Only the person that is in person who is intended to read your message can read it. Nobody else can read it because you wrote it in codes. It's written in a coded language. It means to. It means to. Encrypt. To encrypt, it means to encode. To encode something means to write something in a coded language. It also means to figure out a coded message. To break the code. So if something was written in a coded language, if something was written, if something was encrypted, and if you just broke the encrypt, uh, encrypt, in, 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 encryption, if you broke the code, and if you are able to read it now, well you ciphered it. You ciphered it, you managed to cipher it. What's the antonym of it? I think I'm, I think I made a mistake. Let me, let me back break it. Cipher means to write something in code. Uh, I'm, I'm getting confused. It means to write something in code, to encode, to, to, to encode, to, in, to encrypt. That's what it means. These are the antonyms. These are the antonyms. Because if you're writing something in a coded terms, if you're writing something in a coded term, you finally begin to break the code. That's the antonym. This is the word cipher. This is the antonym. I'm going to put the word right here. I made a mistake. This, this are not the same thing, I put, uh, that's why I put a demarcation here. Let's put down what it means to actually break the code. To cipher something means to write something in code. To break the code would mean to decipher it. To decipher it. I need the room. To decipher means to, decipher means to break the code, to decode. To decode, to understand something, to understand something. If someone says, my God, your handwriting is so atrocious, I cannot decipher anything. In other words, what they're trying to say is that what you have written is illegible. I can't, I can't read it. It's, I cannot decipher what the hell you're trying to say here. I, it's, it's written as if, it, what they're trying to say is that your handwriting is so bad it looks like it's written in a coded word and I can't break the code. I can't decipher it. I can't understand it. Do you understand? To decipher means to understand something, to figure something out, to, to, to know what, what is written there. Decipher, as opposed to cipher. As opposed to cipher. Let's move on then. Let's move on to something new.
What we're going to do next is, is something that as I, as I was studying, right, as I started writing something, I thought that there was a word that we had not learned, and as I started uh, writing it, I realized later on that everything that, we, that I'm about to talk, all the words that we're going to learn, those are all the words that we have learned already before, so I'm not going to go over them in detail, it's more of a review. The word was proverb. What's a proverb? A proverb is a, is a, is a maxim. It's a maxim. It's a, it's a saw. It's a saw. It's an adage. It's a cliché. What's a cliché? A cliché is an overly used expression. An old familiar saying. An old familiar saying. An overly used expressions. Now all of these things actually do not actually mean literally overly used expression, overly used expression actually a cliche, but they are all related. A so is an old, old familiar saying. For example, so, uh, an apple a day, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Well that's an adage, it's a so, it's a maxim. Do you understand? And therefore it became cliche, it, be it has become cliche, it's an old familiar saying. Honesty is the best policy. Well, there you go. That's an adage. That's a maxim. That's a cliche. Do you understand? It's a proverb. It's a it's a it's a saying that we hear all the time. It's it's a, uh, it's used so much that it loses its it, it loses its punch. It loses its effect. It becomes very ordinary, banal. Do you understand? Let's learn that word. Let's learn those words here. And all of these words that you see here, all of these words that we see here, are the words that we had learned on day number forty-five. So what's a cliché? Cliché is an overly used expression, something that is used so often, so 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 usually, that uh, so so commonly that it loses its punch, it loses its effect, it becomes dull, it becomes mundane, it becomes dull, it becomes mundane, it becomes boring, it becomes banal, it becomes hackneyed, it becomes hackneyed, it becomes trite. It becomes pedestrian. Something pedestrian is so called because it is dull, it's ordinary, it's mundane, it's uninteresting. It loses it loses its punch, as we said. Tried, pedestrian. It becomes uh, it almost becomes uh, prosaic. Prosaic. Now prosaic is an interesting word. The word prosaic comes from comes from the word prose. Prosaic is so called because it means having to do with prose, having to do with prose as opposed to poetry. In, it's, it's no longer poetic. Something that is uh, that is poetic. Something that is written in the poetry form is full of emotions. It's full of emotions, it's full of uh, passion, it's full of uh, life. Whereas something prosaic is dull, it's mundane. It ends, it's a letter, it's not a letter that, uh, that is written by, uh, it's not a love letter. It's a letter to you write to somebody where you end your letter by saying, sincerely yours. Sincerely yours is not how you're going to earn, a, sincer, sincerely yours is not how you're going to end a love letter. A love letter is supposed to be poetic, it's supposed to be full of emotions, it's supposed to be full of passion. It's not supposed to be prosaic. Prosaic means it's written uh, in a prose form, and because it's written in a prose form, it's dull, it's not, it doesn't have life, it's mundane, it's ordinary, it's, it's, it's just uninteresting. Do you understand? It's soporific. It is soporific. All of these words, as we said, we learned before, so therefore we're not going to go over them again, because otherwise we'll never get anywhere. But if you're interested, all of these words that you see there, if you have already learned them, and if you might just want to review them, or if you if you have not watched this video at all, you will find these words on day number 13. These words and these words are, of course, sort of related. Because anything that is cliché, anything that's a cliché, can be said to be dull, ordinary, mundane, banal, trite, pedestrian, do you understand? Prosaic, so prosaic. So prosaic literally means uh, something that causes you to fall asleep. That's all. There is a there is a there is a spice that we use in India for in our cooking. What's the spice? 
the word that comes to my mind is the wrong word, so I won't say it. Saffron, that's it. I was about to say sapphire. Sapphire is a different word. It's a stone. It's a very precious stone. The word I was I wanted to use was not sapphire, but saffron. Saffron is a spice that we use in the cooking, in Indian cooking, sapphire. And it makes you drowsy. It makes you fall asleep. It's like turkey in the Thanksgiving time when you eat turkey. After a big meal of a turkey meal, it makes you a bit sleepy because it's, it, it causes drowsiness. That's what sapphire is, or rather saffron is. That's what saffron is. From the word saffron, we have the word soporific. The word soporific has etymology of coming from that word. Do you understand? That was it. One last word I want to cover before we, before we end the video today, before we end the lesson today. A word which has nothing to do with anything at all. It's an entirely separate word. And the word is... Now where do these words come from, you may ask? Where do these words come from? Well, it comes, they come from ordinary reading and writing that you do in any of these exams. Because if you're preparing for SAT or SAT or GRE or GMAT, you have to have decent vocabulary. And these words show up all the time on these exams. Do you understand? They also show up all the time in, in, in any regular writing that you might do. And uh, I made a point of collecting them. I want to learn these words. I want to improve my vocabulary. And what better way to improve my vocabulary than to just stand here and make a video because it forces me to actually sit down and write them down properly, write them down formally so that I have, them, I have these words now for myself, for my own use. And while I was doing that, I said, why not make a video, video of this? Some people might get benefit out of it. Onus. What's an onus? An onus is a burden. An onus is a burden. It's a noun. It's a burden. It's a responsibility. Responsibility. Usually a big one. Not a, it's not a trivial responsibility. It's a, somebody gives you something to do and something some, some responsibility, which is a big responsibility. And that's an onus. Usually a big one. The adjective would be, the adjective, this is a noun, the adjective would be onerous. Onerous. Which means you have burden, burden is a noun. If something is a burden, then that thing is said to be burdensome. A burden is a noun. It's a heavy burden. It's a heavy burden. It's burdensome. It is burdensome. Burdensome is same as onerous. Something that's a heavy, huge responsibility, a difficult task is said to be onerous. Do you understand? That was an onerous task that I had to fulfill for him. Do you understand? That was it. We are done for today. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.